today on Real Life, dealing with the passive aggressive personality on One to One. The predicament of posting a compromising video online on Today's Girls. And John Gilman of Dayspring International reflects on the early days of Christian television. Today on Real Life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit empowers you. And the Bible is your guide to abundant life. Mm -hmm. I'm Tom Hollis with Terry Black. Hi. Yay. Welcome, Terry. Thank and you. Anna Fry. Yeah. Happy Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have some really big news, and I'll sure. let you share that. Oh, me? You. <laughs> okay. Well, we want to make sure that um, you tune in with us on Friday because Dawn's coming. And he's going to be sharing Yay. a special message on signs and wonders. Yay! So nice oh, there he is. I know. <laughs> so he's been recovering, and we're just so glad that he'll be back on Friday. So please come and watch us that day, too. That is so great, you know, mm -hmm. getting the strength back and ready to get, ready to get back at that's it. That's right. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, we have seven days of praise coming next week, Sunday Yay. through Saturday. It's our family time. You're going you're gonna to love it. You're going to enjoy it. We're starting with a time of praise and worship that's on right. Sunday night. That's, yes, that's, that's right. exciting. A, what is it? Alicia Williamson Garcia. Right. right? Oh. Very good. So, thank you. <laughs> She's a fabulous singer. So she'll be great. It'll be a great time of worship and praise. So that's great. So we'll have anointed speakers all week. Mm -hmm. uh, and at, on, on Saturday, we're going to have a special signs and wonders program okay. uh, with uh, Richard Roberts. Oh, great. Who's one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yes. We, we really want you to be involved in that, mm -hmm. and so be sure you tune in every evening. Be sure you watch uh, the programming, and be sure to catch Saturday night. Right. It, right. It'll be a lot. It's great teaching, so you want to get a pad and paper and pad of paper and pencil and make sure that you get ready to take some great notes and, and right. time of worship and praise. So it'll be a lot of yeah. great, great life-changing time. It, it, it will be, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, we're always expectant that God's going to do something on one of these these. Uh, uh, signs and wonders weekend programs that we have, you know, because uh, I think God is waiting for us to respond with faith. Mm, you absolutely. know, he, he's he's wanting to do some things, but he's also wanting us to seek him. When we seek him with all our heart, we'll find him. Well, if he wants us to respond, it also says in scripture that he just wants us, that we just need a seed, a mustard seed That's of great. faith. Right. That's yeah. a teeny weeny uh, little seed. That's so encouraging, isn't yes. it? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I, sometimes we just figure we have to really pump it up big time. Sure, right. Mm -hmm. But we can come humbly just as we are, and he meets us right where we are. I'm really glad he said that because mm -hmm. sometimes I'm thinking, okay, that's how much faith I need right there. Do I have that much? Uh -huh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. yes, okay, yes. I've got that much. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. So. Uh, we have a scripture for you today, John 15, 13. It says this, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, that Jesus said that, and he mm -hmm. was talking about what he was going to do. And another scripture, just like little, little faith is okay, uh, the fact that Jesus called us friends. Mm -hmm. What an amazing thing that mm -hmm. the God of the universe comes, takes on human form, you know, takes on flesh, and then he doesn't just come to boss us around or anything. He Absolutely. comes to say, you're my friend. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and to add to that, too, I love this scripture because not only did he lay down his life for us, but he took all of our sins, all of our condemnation, mm -hmm. everything, all of our shame and our guilt, mm -hmm. and he took that all upon him so we can, we can live completely free Absolutely. of all of that and just mm -hmm. just to remember really what Jesus did for us on the cross is mm -hmm. incredible. Well, and that just is a great reminder for us as we enter Thanksgiving mm, so is true. that we are to be thankful mm -hmm. for what Jesus did for us mm -hmm. and to be thankful for all of our many blessings. And that this has been my challenge this week and I like goals and so maybe I'll challenge you as all as well is that I've been trying to say 10 things a day that I'm thankful for. Right. And it could be in the car, it could be wherever I am, mm -hmm. but I'm just consciously saying 
thank you. Thank you, God, because it, it, it's like you were saying, mm -hmm. Anna, without Christ, mm -hmm. we, we would be nothing. Right. So, And doesn't it increase your joy when oh, you yes. focus on being thankful? Mm -hmm. Even if everything around you is bad, if you can focus and find that good thing, it does increase your joy. Oh, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's the right thing to do. It's the absolutely. right way to live, absolutely. But for some of you who are having a challenge with any kind of prayer request, prayer needs, or challenges in life, we want to let you know that we have prayer partners standing by 24 hours a day, dedicated prayers mm -hmm. that will pray for your needs. They love prayer. They want praise reports too. So please just give us a call. They are standing by to pray for you. And the number is 1-888-665-4483. So please give them a call and let us pray with you. You know, it's, it's so great to be uh, in there sometimes and mm -hmm. hear what they're, they're praying for and, right. and to hear them praying. And I love to have that little like engine of prayer going in yeah. the prayer room in there. Mm -hmm. And it's just awesome. And if you have never called, I just want to I just want to say I challenge you if you've never called the prayer line maybe you've been watching for a long time you've never called call now you re you'll really enjoy the time you have with the yeah. prayer partners absolutely yeah. Yeah. and we really do enjoy getting the phone calls too because that's a great way that we can really connect with you we want to hear what's going on in your mm -hmm. life so we're gonna get the show started today with some praise and worship from Alvin Slaughter he is singing let the church rise Sometimes we hold on a little longer than we should. Letting go can be hard, but it's sometimes for our good. The fear of what's ahead sometimes makes us fall behind. We can see the times are changing, but pretend that we're so blind, you'll never really know just what the future holds but we know God holds us in his hand so now by faith we must climb into the boat and follow his command Lord I Let your faith take you somewhere that you've never been before. Look out into the deep. Let your faith make you fly. Let your faith make you soar. Launch out, launch out into the It's time to wake up and make our dreams come true Because time is always moving and it will not wait for you The fear inside your mind can quench the fire in your heart Yeah, sometimes where you end up is where God wants to start It's never easy when you're walking out by faith Everything seems so different and new But if we only learn To see through eyes of faith We would see life in a different view Let your faith take you somewhere you've never been before. Child, yeah, yeah, yes. Let your faith make you fly. Let your faith make you soar. Oh, oh, oh. 
child, no child. So much for you are waiting. So stop procrastinating. Close your eyes. Just take a leap. So launch out. Let your faith take you somewhere you've never been before. Let your faith make you fly. Let your faith make you soar. Launch out into the deep. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. It can be very difficult to deal with someone who is exhibiting passive aggressive behavior. For parents, it's nothing short of painful to deal with a child who loses control in a fit of negativity. Dr. Carl Benzio is a Christian psychiatrist and the founder of and director of the Lighthouse Network. And he has some help for dealing with this hard to handle behavior in this week's one to one. Dr. Carl, it's so good to have you here today. You are going to be talking to us about passive aggressive behavior in our relationships. And I have to be honest with you, I feel like this passive aggressive term is one that we hear pretty often, but I, if somebody would ask me to define it, I probably wouldn't be able to. So please define it for us. Yeah, passive aggressive behavior is where we indirectly express negative feelings to a person instead of directly okay. and appropriately expressing that Usually it's anger, but that negative or hurtful kind of feeling towards a person. So like you said, it's thrown around a lot, mm -hmm. and you see it a lot, but being able to really define it and have people sort of own up to it and understand it so they can do something about it right. isn't, isn't something that our society does very well. Well, you might be able to help us even understand it more by giving us a couple of, of examples of how it plays out in our relationships. Sure. So, you know, a classic marriage example is whenever people are in having some trouble and some conflict and there's some anger, they'll just give each other the silent treatment. So I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So avoidance. Yes. Um, uh, gossiping. Okay. Uh, when people sort of uh, intentionally uh, act inefficiently, mm -hmm. so especially in the workplace. Um, lateness. You know, when people okay. show up late, it's another way of mm. sort of, you know, expressing some negative feeling, but they're doing okay. it indirectly. Instead of being able okay. to confront the person directly, mm -hmm. they have this, this negative feeling. They want to get at them in some way. They want to get right. back at them, but they're afraid of the confrontation, and they're not quite sure how do I confront a person. So it oozes out in this sort of indirect kind of way that we call this passive-aggressive behavior. Okay, so do I hear you saying that passive-aggressive behavior, a person can display that behavior when they're afraid of some emotion that they're experiencing or the other person might experience? It could be both. You okay. know, a lot of people in our society don't really understand those negative feelings very mm -hmm. well. We're not taught very well how to deal with our sadness, anger, hurt, frustration, embarrassment. Right. Um, so we sort of push them down. We're not quite sure how to talk about them, journal about them, or express mm -hmm. them if they're with another person. Uh, so we only have like a thimble of room to be able to keep those negative feelings. So they're going to ooze out in some way. And sure. so that's why they come out in these sort of what we call passive aggressive kind of ways. Okay. Another uh, situation is that we might um, want to express them to another person, but we're afraid of what they're going to do, mm. whether right. they're going to be assaultive, either verbally okay. or physically in this situation. So we might be afraid to discuss it with them. Yeah. Um, so we try to keep it in, but it comes out in these other sort of subversive, uh, subliminal kind of ways that we call passive passive aggressive behaviors. Okay. So give us, um, like say in a husband and wife relationship, if one spouse is displaying that, 
how how can the other spouse uh, respond to that, or um, how can the person doing it um, work to maybe change their behavior and that passive aggressive behavior? Yeah, you know, um, there's there's passive and there's aggressive at two ends okay. of the spectrum, and then there's assertive in the middle. So for me, passive is whenever we only take into account the other person's needs, feelings, thoughts, agenda, and okay. I ignore mine. Mm. Okay. Aggressive is whenever I take into account only my feelings, sure. agenda, emotions, thoughts, needs, and I ignore the other person's. Okay. So assertive is where I take into account your feelings, mm -hmm. needs, thoughts, emotions, agenda, and mine. Okay. And as I'm taking both into those consideration, I don't want to ignore it. Right. I want to express it, but I want to express it in a way that's kind, that's appropriate, that's respectful mm -hmm. to you and your thoughts so that we can hopefully engage in some kind of discussion. Okay. And so usually this um, passive aggressive behavior is a uh, poor coping skill sure. to deal with confronting okay. a situation. So developing co confrontation skills mm -hmm. or conflict resolution skills is an important and key uh, solution to sort of get rid of this passive aggressive behavior. Okay, and does it look differently between a parent-child relationship? Um, it, it, to some extent, I mean, the depth that you can go in and discuss the actual problem mm -hmm. is gonna be different if it's a, maybe a, a spouse, okay. you know, two spouses discussing it as opposed to a parent and child. Sure. Uh, but the basic you know, construct of wanting to acknowledge your feelings and thoughts and the other person's mm -hmm. in a healthy way is real important. So I've developed a sort of a, a conflict resolution yeah. process that I call DESC, okay. D-E-S-C. So D is describe the situation. Mm -hmm. So I would say, when you didn't pick me up at the airport, mm -hmm. or when I didn't get picked up at the airport, E is express. So I would express my feelings. Okay. I felt unimportant. Mm -hmm. I felt lonely. I felt belittled. I mm -hmm. felt forgotten. Okay. Then S is specify what you want. So sometimes we expect the other person to be a mind reader right. and know exactly what the solution is. So I'd specify, um, if you're not able to pick me up, if you could just call me and I can find another way. Okay. And then C is consequences or rewards. So the consequences, if we don't do it the right way, is our relationship is going to get farther apart. I won't mm -hmm. trust you as much. I won't want to communicate with you. Um, right. I won't be able to rely on you. Or rewards is if we do it the right way, our relationship will grow. Sure. We'll feel more confident in each other um, and positive things will happen. Mm -hmm. And so we go back and forth. I do my D, you do your D. Sure. I do my E okay. and back and forth. So we both get a chance to put all the stuff out there on the table. Mm -hmm. And hopefully as we come together and huddle that way, we can find out a solution. And so I don't have to just get home from the airport and ignore you, right. uh, gossip about you to my friends. Mm -hmm. I would say, well, you know, she blew me off. She didn't pick me up at the airport. We can right. just come together and have a direct sure. discussion about it, but in a way that sort of has rules and has structure to it that allows us to express what we need to express, okay. but in a way that's respectful and hopefully finds a solution that we're both uh, agreeable to. Great. That's such good advice. And it sounds fairly easy to at least start implementing some of those in our relationships. So we want to let you know that Dr. Carl has a wonderful website with all kinds of information and resources. You can connect with him on our website, ctvn.org. And Dr. Carl, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you, Anna. On Real Life, President of Dayspring International, John Gilman, reminisces with Don about his early days in Christian television at CBN and the 700 Club. Shelley Prindle continues her teaching series on The Word for Today. And coming up next, the teens face a potentially devastating situation when they find a certain video posted on the internet on Today's Girls. That's next on Real Life. It's sister to sister. Flo, what do we have going on? Well, Amy, you know, we're not one for mixing words. Can cheating spouses truly be forgiven? Does God speak audibly today? And most of all, why do we feel we have to have it all together? Yes, and we have a special guest, Heather, talking about mental health issues. We'll see you Wednesday. Can't wait.
Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Boy, are we going to have fun this Saturday. Cornerstone's Great American Hymn Sing kicks off our block party this week. And the Encounter Paradise Lost is our feature movie. It's a great film with an awesome message. So get ready to sing along with your Cornerstone family at the Cornerstone Block Party, Saturday, Saturday 6, 6 to 9. 9. The holidays hold a special place in my heart. It's a time when family and friends and loved ones join around a table making new memories and they really enjoy the good holiday foods. When you give to Cornerstone this month, you'll receive my special thank you gift. It's the At Home for the Holidays cookbook. This book is filled with not only some of my favorites, but popular recipes from over the past 20 years on At Home. It's special because I've included personal holiday stories that I wanted to share with you, my Cornerstone family. November Partners. Our gift to you this month is Arlene Williams at Home for the Holidays cookbook, featuring over 300 year-round recipes, advice from Arlene, and special menu plans and pairings. Be sure to send your monthly gift for your copy because it just wouldn't be the same without you. Not a partner with us or you haven't called in a while? Call us today to join the Cornerstone family and let's make new traditions with our family together. Well, I've been sitting here looking through Arlene's cookbook. The recipes look amazing and my mouth is watering. So we just want to remind you that for your gift to Cornerstone Television um, through the month of November, this is our thank you gift back to you for giving to us. Um, so it's time to talk about today's girls. And when it comes to social media and the internet, teens are certainly the experts. Posting to Facebook and Instagram can be great ways to stay in touch and have fun with their friends. But what happens when something inappropriate gets posted online, such as an inappropriate video? Someone can get very hurt, and that is exactly what the teens find out in this week's Today is Girls. Today, I'm taking you to YouTube. In today's world, nothing goes without being videotaped. Cameras and video surveillances are all around us and they are recording our every move. Some can be good and keep us safe and help us, but others can lead down a dangerous road. Last week, we found out that Ambria was at a party, got wasted, videotaped, and then it was posted on YouTube for the world to see. And now that she's found out about it, she'll do anything to get it down before Uncle Rizzio sees it and grounds her for life. Let's check out YouTube today and meet Alexis. Let's watch how she helps Ambria and saves her social life. Ambria just returned from spending the night at Taylor's house. She flips open and surfs over to YouTube. She watches her video that was uploaded by the name of Anonymous Fun. How could I be so stupid? Now what am I going to do? Oh, you look awful. What happened? Did your uncle suspect anything? No, he didn't suspect anything. He thinks I'm an angel. Will you help me? Do what? Lie again? No. No, Taylor, I'm so sorry. I promise I will never make you do anything like that ever again. But I really need your help in talking to Alexis. You guys are friends, but she doesn't really know me. and. I really, really need to find out who posted that video, and I need it down now. Okay, quit whining. I'll do a three-way Skype call and see if she's around. But let me do the talking. All right, I, pr I promise I won't say anything stupid. Hey, girl, do you think my hair is too short? I told the lady not to cut it too short. But do they ever listen? No, they just keep cutting away. <laughs> It looks great. Your hair always looks great. I just, I love your hair. I thought I was just talking to you, Taylor. What is she doing here? 
I should have texted you. Um, I need to ask, I mean, we need to ask you a favor. What kind of favor? We need you to take down the YouTube video of Ambria before everyone sees it. Hello, everyone has seen it. Nice dance moves, Ambria. <laughs> well, my uncle hasn't seen it, and if he does, I'm gonna be on the first flight back home. She didn't mean to get wasted on purpose. Her drink was spiked. Really? Wow, that stinks. Don't you know, never take a drink from someone you don't know? She didn't know. She's new, new to everything, Alexis. Yeah, and I just, I wanted to have fun and fit in and get along with everyone. Well, maybe you should just come clean and tell your uncle. I can't, he'll be furious. Maybe so, but give him the chance to hear you out. He might just understand. Everyone makes mistakes, Ambria, and this one was not your fault. You had no control over it. If I were you, I'd tell him. I agree, Ambria. Uncle Riz will understand. Okay. Say a prayer or two for me, though. Taylor, will you do my eulogy? Oh, seriously? You're so dramatic. Now, go talk to your uncle before you tell another lie. You're right. I'm gonna do it now. I gotta go. Thanks, Alexis. Thanks, Taylor. <coughs> Poor girl. Glad it's her and not me. Are you sure my hair looks okay? It looks fabulous. I gotta go, too. Um, I'll keep you posted. So, how did it go? He was mad. My aunt actually cried. They were beyond mad that I lied. I'm grounded and no more parties. So my social life <laughs> is completely over. How long are you grounded? Four years. <laughs> I didn't protest. I'm sure he'll lighten up as the years go by though. Did they see the video? Yeah, I showed it to them. My uncle actually wanted to go to the school and demand who posted the video. That could cause a lot of trouble. Trouble for Jessica and whoever else posted it. Yeah, I know. I would for sure not have a social life ever again if that happened. I'm really hoping he'll cool off. Why do you have long sleeves on today? It's like a gazillion degrees out. I'm cold natured. I always wear long sleeves. I gotta go. Glad to know you're still around. <laughs> Me too. Hey, thanks for all your help. No problem. Did you know that only about 7 to 8 percent of teens have YouTube accounts? That doesn't sound so bad. But here's the real scoop. You don't have to have a YouTube account to read and view the videos that are being uploaded. Ask any teenager if they've surfed YouTube videos and 99.9 .9 percent will say yes. And several online surveys state that 93 percent of teens visit YouTube at least once a week. And according to YouTube's online facts, two billion videos are watched every day. Two billion. That doesn't seem possible. But safety-wise, YouTube isn't really the place for teens to connect or meet up with friends or strangers. And YouTube does state they prohibit pornography, drug abuse, underage drinking. You no, know, that's all great, however. What's alarming is what teens are viewing and reading. Foul language, racial slurs, questionable behavior, and comments run reckless. Just like Ambria's video we just watched. So what do we do as parents and grandparents? First of all, we need to know what our teens are doing. Search the internet and find out what's trending. Find out what videos teens are watching and why. Learn about the YouTube challenges and talk to your daughter about the dangers. What are challenges? They're dares and they're being videotaped. For example, there's the cinnamon challenge in which people try to eat a 
eat ground cinnamon in a short amount of time without water. It's impossible to do. This challenge can leave a person gasping for air and water, and it can cause sudden health issues like a collapsed lung. Then there's the salt and ice challenge, in which people put salt on their skin, put an ice cube on it for as long as they can withstand the pain. This causes severe burns. Neither of these challenges can be considered smart or intelligent things to do, yet there are thousands of YouTube videos showing people, young and old, participating in them. Be aware of what your teen daughter is viewing and uploading. Once it's out there, it's out there. And videos are very difficult to remove because of the rapid rate they're being shared and embedded on other social networks. This is real life with today's girls. And even in these out of control times, stay encouraged. The Lord is still in control. He tells us in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Now, don't miss next week's episode when Alexis deals with her real life issue that she has covered up for years. Terry, I think that these segments are so helpful to oh, us as yes. parents and grandparents just to know mm -hmm. what our teens are dealing with That's these days. That's right. And I, I think today's message was we need to be aware right. of what our, our teens are doing and not take a back seat mm -hmm. to be involved because especially on the internet, whatever's posted yeah, is it's for there, there forever. Yeah, it is. Right. Oh, right. Well, we want to just remind you that Today's Girls has this one sheet with all of Terry's tips on it for um, being more aware of what's going on with your teen on YouTube. Um, so you can just call into the station or send us an email and we'll get that right out to you. Yay. Well, we'll be right back. Motherhood is the hardest job I ever loved, and to be the mom my kids need me to be means I need large doses of encouragement and wisdom. And that's why I'm excited to introduce Mom Talk, a brand new segment on Real Life that is time just for us each week. Join me and five other moms every Monday and let us bring you real life encouragement, practical advice, biblical wisdom, and lots of fun. We'll see you on Real Life. Connect online with Cornerstone Network. Find us at facebook.com slash cornerstone TV and click the like button. You'll see show updates, exclusive videos, inspiring scripture, and lots of behind the scenes photos. If you have a question or a comment, post it on our page. We want to hear from you. Connect online with Cornerstone at facebook.com slash cornerstone TV. Do you ever wonder what happens behind the scenes at Cornerstone Network? You can find out with the Real Life Today newsletter. It is full of information, inspiration, and personal stories. But the best part is the program schedule. If you ever think there's nothing good on TV, you don't have the right information. Get the program guide, music, movies, ministry for believers like you and me. Call 888-665-4483 or ctvn.org. It will be seven days of praise, amazing worship, incredible teaching, God's Word spoken into your life, signs and wonders, prayer, healing, and deliverance for you. It's real life, family times with signs and wonders, seven days of praise. Don't miss it, November 16th through November 22nd, seven days of praise. It's time for today's Bible study. Our teacher this week is Shelley Prindle, founder and president of Hope and Passion Ministries in Irwin, Pennsylvania. Her series is called The Camel That Made It Through the Eye of the Needle. And she continues her teaching now on The Word for Today. The 
the camel that made it through the eye of the needle. We're working on our series here that concentrates on Joseph of Arimathea, who I affectionately refer to as Joey of A. Now this guy is really neat because he was very, very wealthy, and he was a politician in his day on a pretty evil council, but yet he was looking for the kingdom of God. And it's amazing to see what God can do with the life of somebody who even seems like they're the most unlikely person to fall in love with and to serve Jesus Christ. Because with God, all things are possible. And so what I want you to do is in addition to thinking about the man Joey of A, I want you to go back with me in your mind, if you would, to that actual moment in history when Jesus had died on the cross. Now, I know it's a difficult place for us to go, but we need to go there. Because far too often what happens is we as Christians think about Jesus dying on the cross, and then we jump immediately forward to him coming out of the tomb and the women and the disciples running to him and seeing him alive. But my question for you is this. What happened in between there? What happened after 3 p.m. when Jesus had died on the cross and 6 p.m. was soon to come? Now, 6 p.m. would have started the Jewish Sabbath, the Jewish Sabbath holiday, and so... Jesus' body had to be taken down from the cross within that three-hour window. What is most interesting to me is who wasn't there. We don't hear of any of Jesus' family members being there after he had died on the cross and before he goes into the tomb. We don't read of his disciples being there. We know that they had fled. So here is this man with whom so many people walked and so many people loved when he was alive, but now his body, his dead body, is hanging on the cross. And that body needs to be laid to rest, to be put in its place, to be resurrected. Friends and family are all gone. Who shows up? Joey of A, one of the most unlikely people. Now what I need you to do with me is go back and I want you to imagine what Jesus' body would have looked like hanging on that cross. Now, God knows that we mean no disrespect to him, but this was a very gory and gruesome scene. You remember that Jesus had been beaten to the point that his intestines were probably coming out of his back and his sides. He had had a crown of thorns pushed down on his head, so he was bleeding from his head. He, of course, had marks in his hands and feet and was bleeding from there from being nailed to the cross. He had had a sword put through his side. Water and blood had spilled out. He had had his beard ripped out. He'd been spit upon. He was absolutely unrecognizable. A gory mess at this point. And who would be there? You know, I've pondered this question myself as my husband and I don't have any children of our own. There have been times when I've wondered who will take care of me when I'm old, when I'm sick? Who will bury me and lay this body to rest as I wait for the resurrection? But I want to show you that God brings us comfort and tells us that he will provide even if everybody seems to be gone. And sometimes he'll provide in the most unlikely way. The Bible tells us clearly what happened. As Jesus' body is hanging on that cross and everyone else is gone, before he gets put into the tomb, in Mark chapter 15, verse 43, the Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Now I want you to think about those two words. The Bible is very clear. He took courage and went to Pilate. Joey of A used the political power that he had, but what he still did at the same time was he put his reputation on the line, put his job on the line, his friendships on the line, and maybe even his life but he took courage and asked for the body of Jesus. See, there were many, many people who were willing to follow Jesus while he was alive, while he could feed them, while he could heal their bodies, while he could teach them and do all kinds of wonderful things. But who was going to be there now that Jesus, his body was dead, hanging on the cross? He was with the Father looking down, but somebody needed to be there to love him enough to honor that body. And we know that that's a part of the human experience. When we love someone after they die, we still honor their body. And I want you to keep this in mind. It wasn't the disciples and it wasn't Jesus' family who honored his body after he had died on that cross. It was this unlikely character, this rich man, of whom the Bible says it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into the kingdom of God. It was this guy who ended up loving Jesus enough to care for his body at this point. 
And tomorrow we're going to learn more about just how deep his love was. John Gilman is the president of Dayspring International, which has taken the gospel to millions in India through a powerful film project. Recently, he sat down with Dawn and reminisced about his early days as a pioneer in Christian television at the Christian Broadcasting Network. I'm so pleased, John, that you're here with us. Thank you so much. Here Great. in Pittsburgh at Cornerstone. And here, this is a television studio, just celebrated our, our television station, just celebrated our 35th anniversary. And I think, Congratulations on that. I think as I'm looking back and thinking about how God's used you in the ministry of television, you've been involved in Christian TV longer than that. Well, I don't like to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I look at the 11 grandchildren and six children, and I think about, what? Well, how could this have happened so fast? But uh, it was a privilege to be at the beginning, almost the beginning. Uh, I was at probably 1966 was where I entered into the picture with uh, Pat Robertson and CBN. In 66. Yeah, March of 66. And uh, what had happened just prior to that, uh, a few months before that, they'd had a telethon, and God had poured out his spirit. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of people were healed. And you have to understand, this television station uh, had 17,000 watts of power. It was black and white. It only reached, just reached around the block. But yet <laughs> people were really coming to faith in Christ and getting healed, and the power of God was manifest. So when I came in on this in March, I heard these stories, and I was amazed because myself, I didn't know anything about the move of the Holy Spirit, and I was outside of that, actually. I uh, have to say that my heart was uh, pretty empty and uh, lonely in terms of I loved Jesus, the historical Jesus. I trained for the ministry, but I didn't know who the Holy Spirit was. But you were attracted to the television part of it? Well, I was attracted to drama and, and production. I had been involved in that uh, in, in college and all, and so I was very interested in And my mother-in-law wrote about uh, to me on a letter that this Christian television station is looking for cameramen and uh, audio engineers or whatever. And so I thought, I'll just go over there and see if I can get a job, you know, maybe a part-time or something. So I went over and investigated it and stayed there almost 13 years. <laughs> well, you, did you live in Virginia? Virginia yeah, well, in Virginia, uh, in Portsmouth at the time where the, the CBN was located. You know, CBN was built on a trash dump. It was uh, the, the, literally out the back door of the station was a big pile of trash. And I used to go through there and look for things that I could use in my office. I found, <laughs> I found an old uh, uh, filing cabinet one day, and I brought it in and sanded it down and spray painted it. And so, we, I mean, we didn't have a whole lot of budget. Well, you know, it was, it was at CBN that Norma Bixler went in 1969 mm -hmm. and as just a visit and it was in that visit that the Spirit of God spoke to her about starting Cornerstone. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that period of time from from the 66 or 5 in that area that 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 10 years saw an enormous uh, a growth of, of the Christian television um, ministry all over America. It was phenomenal what happened. We couldn't believe it. We never heard a cable. A man came right, to us right, right. and talked about cable and he, he had, his eyes were just bulging out of, uh, with excitement and a blaze and he said, this cable, this call it CATV. He said, this That's is right. coming, it's coming. And we said, what is that? And he said, well, they're wiring up all these cities and uh, you're going to be able to buy your groceries and cars and everything from <laughs> cable. And we said, no, what are you talking about? But when we saw the cable rising on the telethons, then we began to realize the, the, this country is changing rapidly. Right in, you're, you're right at the beginning of that wave of cable. Yeah. Uh, cable in, the, in the, I guess, the early 70s and in through the, the 70s. Years. And then the satellite com coming in in 76, 77 RCA and then mm -hmm. joining on that. And then instead of we were bicycling these videotapes around the country to 180 stations, changing that over to uh, satellite was so incredibly exciting. Today we take it for granted, but... God was at work to uh, change all of this for his glory. Well, that, that I wanted to go to that point because it was a sovereign hand of God yep. that brought Christian communications, Christian media into that position. Yes. And it was through visionaries like yourself and with Pat and Jim Baker yes. and uh, Paul Crouch that took advantage of that opportunity and, and, and grow, grew with it. Yeah, so many, and we didn't know what we were doing, actually. Somebody, one of the engineers said one day, this UHF is going to be a, is a sleeping giant. It's going to grow. Well, later on, those little stations that were worthless were sold for $200 million each to, I'm talking about in the secular, you know, and today now that's all gone and pretty much we're looking at cable but, right. and satellite. But 
what a time to be. It, it, was a, it was a moment in history that is unprecedented, and it caused millions of people to come into the kingdom. And I think thousands of churches were born, mm -hmm. uh, movements were born. I, mean, I remember uh, Glow Fellowship that a few women attended. That suddenly uh, just became national, full gospel businessmen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, bookstores, Christian bookstores and the music industry, all of that, all mushroomed at the same time. Came, came, came out of the, I think came out of the television expo yeah. exposure. Yeah, it was, yeah, because the people were ready to see, oh, this is, this is right to love this Lord Jesus, to believe that He is the living God, that He is God incarnate. And people are bold enough to talk about it on the air in this way. Well, wasn't the, the Holy Spirit's manifestation of the Holy Spirit, what many call the charismatic movement, wasn't, wasn't that a big ingredient too? Well, it was everything. It was the thing. Matter of fact, uh, without the Holy Spirit, I, I mean, we, to me, uh, Christian television wouldn't exist. No. Because uh, when, for example, I know Pat would be on on the air, we started a station in uh, Dallas and uh, got on the air and we asked the question, Pat asked the question to all of us, should we talk about the uh, power of God and the move of the Holy Spirit or should we be, just be quiet and, and you know, not be too bold about it? And the answer was in our prayer meeting, yes, we must declare uh, the glory of God and its fullness and power mm -hmm. and that very first night and it was a wonderful thing. Thousands of people came to faith in Christ and were filled with the Holy Spirit and went on to serve him. Uh, we must not be ashamed of this gospel. It is the power of God. Amen, amen. Well, let's look back for just a minute longer at how uh, CBN connected with Jim Baker or Jim Baker connected with CBN mm -hmm. and how he had a part to play in those early days. Well, Pat it, I invited him to come and do a uh, children's program, which he was able to do, and they did a wonderful series. I directed it every day hundreds and hundreds of times. It was drew so many people to watch the, the network the children did. If you get the calves, you get the cows, they say. So, uh, so then uh, he also asked Pat if he could make a program sort of like the old Johnny Carson Tonight Show, mm -hmm. and Pat had agreed to that, so that's how it really the idea sort of got started, and it evolved out of the telethon in 1966, as I recall it. That was the real first 700 Club uh, program after the telethon ended after about 30 days. So they decided to keep on going. Let's pray for people. Let's get people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And so they started that night, and it's been going ever since. And Jim was the first host of the 700 Club. Yeah, I was directing that night. It was pretty amazing. What, what, a, what a great memory. Yeah. But, you know, looking forward, John, God's moving again through media. Yeah. He's moving again. And I believe as these end days start to unfold, he's going to use media in ways to reach people through the power of the Holy Spirit yes. that we haven't really ever experienced before. Well, just like in those days when we were marveled at the technology that was coming in front of a satellite and cable and all of these things, so we should marvel at what God is getting ready to do today. The technology that is right now being developed is going to be astounding. I've read some of the things. I can't believe what this next uh, generation is going to see if the Lord tarries. It's going to blow our minds away because 7 billion people on this planet are going to hear the gospel, That's and right. I believe they're going to hear it through mass communication. That's exactly right. And just as cable had its place to bring us to this level, mm -hmm. interactive television, digital television, digital yep. communication is going to take us up to that level of reaching the entire world with the gospel. Not yes. to make, not to be in, in place of the church, but to facilitate the church. That's part of it. Well, because we are. We are part of the church. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a privilege to mm -hmm. be able to sit with Thank you, you and to talk about how, how this industry, so how this ministry started. Literally, this ministry at Cornerstone started in the birth out of God speaking to Norma at CBN. Amazing, amazing. And God has poured out His Spirit on the world. 800 million or more people, Dr. David Baird said, have experienced an encounter with the Holy Spirit since the 1960s. 800 million? 800 million. You can read it in his book on the world evangelism and the history of Christianity in this uh, century, the last 100 years. Wow. So think about it. Wow. And the Christian television has had a lot to do with that uh, knowledge of, of the power of this gospel. Jesus, the greatest evidence of Jesus' incarnation is the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's and, exactly uh, right. If you want proof, encounter encounter the Lord Jesus through the, His Holy Spirit. And as we approach Pentecost and get in into the season of the Pentecost feast, watch what God does now. Because I, I, I believe 
as Charles always, Charles Sanders always said, the best is yet to come. In, Absolutely in the is. Thank good, you. Doug. Good to be with you. Um, God honor. bless you. Tomorrow on Real Life, he's been praised as the fastest guitar player in the world, and he has quite a story to tell. The music and ministry of Dennis Agajanian. Shelly Prindle of Hope and Passion Ministries continues her teaching series on the Word for Today. And no question is too difficult for our panel. They dig deep into their Bibles to find answers to your hard questions. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Well, you know, the best is yet to come. Dawn just said that Absolutely. in that interview. And, and that's really true for you, too. The best is yet to come. Mm. As you uh, entrust things to God, God begins to work. And we've got people entrusting things to God that have called in today. Oh, that's mm. great. And I think you have a praise report. I do have that's, a praise report. It says great. here that Elizabeth prayed for and God granted her uh, a, a date and a place for her art exhibit. She had called Yay. in about that. So. Hey, that's that's a that's a real praise report Absolutely. there. Absolutely, God yeah. is always He's always in the details. Absolutely, you know? yeah. So, and I have some prayer requests for all those kind of different um, different requests that we have. I have for Peggy. She needs a physical healing, and she has some family family issues. And so we have to we'll pray for you for that, and for Barbara. She also has a need for physical healing and spiritual healing. She needs an MRI and perhaps surgery. We're going to be praying for that. And for Jason, he needs some guidance. So we just will be praying for you. God, just Absolutely. direct them. Mm -hmm. the, that's, what we, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one particular one touches my heart. It's a woman who is raising her grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And I just think there are so many women out there who are in the time of their life where things should be slowing down, but they're stepping up to raise their grandchildren. She's also working a job and she's, I, her grandchild needs surgery possibly and she's praying that this grandchild will not need that surgery. And um, so we, we're definitely going to be lifting you up and um, God's just going to bless bless you for all that you're doing. Well, why don't we why don't we take these requests to the Lord? Um, mm -hmm. Again, they've called in. They've been prayed for by our prayer partners. Again, we were talking earlier in the show. If you've never called the prayer partners, it's a great time to call them right now. Absolutely. So uh, why don't you listen to us pray and then get hold of a prayer partner? Absolutely. It'll it'll make a, a big difference in your day. Anna, could you just lift these up to the yes. Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you so much for um, for being with us mm -hmm. and being with each one of these precious people that mm -hmm. called in with a prayer request. Lord, we give you all the praise and the glory for um, for just meeting the need of the woman with her art space. And um, God, we just we lift up those that are struggling and in need of physical healing today. Mm -hmm. and we pray for that grandbaby that is possibly facing surgery. Yes. Lord, I just pray that that will not be necessary, but that you'll bring healing and wholeness to, mm -hmm. to her body and to that family. Just yes. bless that grandma who is taking care of her today. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Father. It is so great that we get to entrust these to a faithful God yes, who will do great and mighty things above all we can ask or think. We commit these requests and these dear people to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It was just said in the previous segment that it is the power of God that makes a difference. Absolutely. Always trust God wants to do something amazing. He's an amazing God. He's going to do something amazing in your life today. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to close the program with a song by the Ember Days called Brothers. Mm -hmm.